Hey everybody, welcome to Video Game Corner. It's me, Jason, and today we're going to be looking at some RPGs from this beautiful piece of hardware right here. This, as you all know, I'm sure you all know, is the PlayStation 1. The first PlayStation, the disc spinner machine thingamajig. Anyway, I don't know. Were there any, uh, any, uh, uh like, nicknames for it? You guys tell me. But, uh, this is my, uh, modded PS1 that I use all the time, and there's a, uh, yep, a little, uh, burn disc in there that my daughter was playing the other day. She wanted all the Disney games. But anyway, um, I'm going to talk today about some of the RPGs that I like on the system, and I'm not going to do my top five, top ten, because I have such a hard time deciding which one's better than the other. I'm just going to show RPGs that I like, because I haven't played them all. Maybe one day after I play every single RPG on the system, then I can go ahead and make a comparison that way. But for now, I'm just going to do uh, games I like. So, first game I like to talk about is... Um, it's one of my uh, favorite games. It's one of the first RPGs I ever played on the... Um, ever, because I, I didn't get into RPGs until I got older, until about a few years ago. And um, this is one of the first RPGs I ever played on the PS... This is like the first RPG I ever played on the PS1, not and, and one of the first RPGs I ever played ever. And it's uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. In Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you take on the role of Alucard. He is the son of Dracula, and if you look at the name Alucard, it's Dracula spelled backwards. Now in this game, um, oh, there's also another story going on where um, Richter Belmont has gone missing, and Maria Renard is actually trying to find him. So, you play as Alucard in the game, and it's, and it's just typical RPG style. Um, you level up, you uh, collect items, you equip items. Um, there's a there's a shop, but it's not like a regular shop. Um, it's actually in the library, and you uh, deal with that guy, and he's kind of weird and creepy, and um, he's like ah, and he has that kind of creepy voice. But um, the game's really fun. It's it's got great control and. Uh, it just got it's 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 got just so many uh, great RPG style and platformer. I guess you would call it an RPG platformer. But um, you play as Alucard and you fight. Uh, it's a sequel to uh, Rondo of Blood, which is a, a PC Engine, which is the ter Japanese Turbo Graphics uh, CD um, version. Because the Turbo Graphics had the PC Engine and the, uh, then they had a CD add-on, the same as the Turbo Graphics or the Turbo Duo was another one. But that's what it was. It was Rondo, Rondo of Blood, and out here we got the port uh, for the Super Nintendo called um, Castlevania Dracula X. So, I really like this game a lot. Um, I know a lot of people say because it's a left-to-right uh, game that, uh, that it's not a, uh, uh, a true RPG, and I do I kind of see what they're saying, but um, it's in my, in my eyes, it's an RPG. I always have this rule that if I can level up, it's an RPG. If I can't level up, it's not. And I think that's, I don't think that's for everybody's, you know, everybody's definition of it because a lot of people argue that Zelda is an RPG. I personally don't think it is. I think it's just an adventure game. But I always look at things that if I can, you know, if, if I start at level one and I can go to level two and up, then it's an RPG and my, and my stats go up and every time I level up that kind of thing. And, um, you know, in, in a way, there's a lot of other games that are RPGs that really aren't RPGs, too, I guess. But anyway, but that's uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Another game I want to talk about is Final Fantasy IX. In Final Fantasy IX, you end up playing a few different characters um, in your team. You have Zidane, who's the main character, and uh, he's, you know, a hero type, you know, um, suave, you know, ladies' man kind of guy. Uh, you have Dagger, who's actually the princess. Um, you have Captain Steiner, who is the captain of the guard for the princess, and who later she becomes the queen. 
And also you have Vivi, who's a uh, black mage, but he's a kid. And the four of them set out, and Steiner hates Zidane. It's really funny. And then you end up, and there's also more characters that show up. And uh, Zidane, he's like with this theater group of thieves, and they're kind of like pirate types, but they're a pretty funny little group. And, um, Z you know, in Dagger, she's, um, she, she's really the princess. She ends up becoming the queen later on. Uh, Captain Steiner, they, uh, Zidane calls him Rusty because he's got this rusty armor. He's just kind of like a by-the-book, a uh, little bit too much type of character. Uh, and then Vivi's just this kid who's trying to understand himself. And there's all this stuff going on with these black mages being produced in, like, a factory. And uh, the queen is, like, sending them to attack other, you know, other kingdoms in, in, the, in the world. And she's being manipulated by this other guy who's really the real bad guy in the game. And, and he has this, this thing where he can control dragons. And it's really cool. There's so many twists and turns in this game. And I don't know. I look at some of these Final Fantasy games. And this is one of those games where it's not really about one thing. It's about so many different things and so many storylines. But you have so much fun playing it. And you want to see what happens. But the character development is just done so well in You know, this a lot of people talk about Final Fantasy VII as being like, uh, you know, the top dog in the Final Fantasy series. But I myself, I believe that Final F I've played seven. I've played nine. I've played uh, one. I've played part of two. I've played a lot of three. And uh, I've played a lot of four. I haven't played five or six. And I, I hear that six is supposed to be the, the, the one of the best ones. Um, and so is five supposed to be pretty good too. But and I haven't played eight yet, or ten, or any of the others. But nine, I played, and it was one of those games I just could not put down. I was just like, I had to just keep playing, and I had to find out what was going on. This game has so much personality. Um, it's every character has been so well developed, and they're developed well in Final Fantasy VII too. Uh, the one thing I never, I didn't really liked about Final Fantasy VII is that you have to, um, is that Cloud and Sephiroth, Sephiroth's di difficulty is based on Cloud's level, which I never really liked. I thought that was kind of cheap, and um, I, uh, and, and a lot of people do that trick where you kill Cloud and then you level up all your other characters, so Cloud is like a low level and they're a high level, and that's kind of kind of defeats the whole purpose of an RPG. I mean, you're supposed to you're supposed to enjoy the story and, and the characters and everything. It's just not you shouldn't have to go to little tricks. And I heard that Final Fantasy VIII. I haven't played it, but they say that uh, the whole game is based on the characters' levels. And I, I don't know. I just don't think it's a good idea. But they didn't do that in this. This went back to the traditional style uh, RPG, and it has some great stuff in it. And I, I just really enjoyed the story. And this is in my, if, if I had a, uh, out of all the RPGs I've ever played, this is definitely in the top five, if top ten, if not the top five, my favorite games. And uh, I just, I enjoy the hell out of it. It's, it's such a good game. You guys should really try playing it. Uh, another game I want to talk about is another uh, favorite game of mine is uh, Parasite Eve. In Parasite Eve, you play as Aya Brea, and she's a tough broad, I'll tell you. She um, ends up, uh, in the start here, she ends up uh, seeing Eve, who's this uh, opera singer, and she ends up catching the whole theater on fire. That's how this thing opens, and the opening scene is just so cool. And uh, what she does is she's actually being controlled by mitochondria who have become sentient. And uh, they want to basically take over the world. And, and but Eve also has mitochondria in her. In her, but they're different. They're a different type of mitochondria, and they actually coexist with humans. And they aren't out to kill her. But so that's the only way she can protect herself against Eve. So Eve gets her gun, and she goes after. Uh, I mean, not Eve. Sorry, Ayabrea gets her gun, and she goes after Eve. And. Um, Again, the story's really good because it's 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 a lot of uh, she she's trying to figure out uh, what to do, and there's so much um, detail with the characters, there's character development. There's details on mitochondria and what it is, and 
when when you play this game, you actually feel like you learn a little bit um, about mitochondria. Um, it was based on a book in Japan, who they actually made a movie about it. And this, um, they even one of the characters in here, he actually come. He's from Japan, and he actually explains about this happening before in Japan. And that's actually this game is actually a sequel to a book, which actually later became a, a, a movie, which is really been interesting because I don't know if that's ever been done before where they made the game the sequel. But uh, the combat system is really cool in this. Um, it's uh, you know you you it's it's it, that's different. You don't buy um, equipment upgrades; you find them. So it kind of has that Castlevania uh, Symphony of the Night feel where you have to find stuff as far as that. Um, you know, and plus you can run around while you're, um, uh, you know, battling. So the story's really cool, and it all ends up with uh, Eve trying to have a baby and, and all this other stuff going on. It's, it's, a lot really, it's just a really, really well-developed story. You know, the really cool thing about this game is that the battle system is like a cross between, uh, like, an action RPG and a turn-based RPG. Because when you get hit, uh, or when you're waiting for your turn, you got your little bar that goes up, and, you're wa and you can run around and avoid being hit by the enemies. So it's, it's kind of cool in that respect. And then you can go ahead and, and, you know, attack. But a lot of times when you attack and you're shooting your gun, they can still hit you because you stop moving. So it does, you know, gives them a chance to hit you. And I always thought that was pretty cool. The story in this is so detailed and in-depth. It is such a good game. And, and I got a funny little story. When I first got this and I played through it the first time, I got to the final boss, and you kill the final boss, then you have to go run in and you have to do this thing with the ship. You have to blow up the ship. But you gotta run, the boss is like dragging itself after you because you've pretty much, you know, destroyed it, except it's still alive. And you're running from it and it's chasing you. In uh, the whole, you know, horror, you know, ha slasher horror movie style. Where you're running and they're like walking or dragging themselves, but yet they're keeping up with you. And uh, I screwed up the first time because I didn't really, I didn't pay attention and I screwed up and he caught me. And then I, I played that final battle like three, four times, and I finally beat it, got to the end screen, and then my PlayStation froze. And I was so mad, and I said, you know what, I beat it, all I missed, I, I went ahead and beat it, and I got, to the la I got to the last exit before it goes to the last cutscene. The only thing I didn't get was that last cutscene, and I was like, I beat it, I'm not playing it again. I was so frustrated, because I, I kept screwing up, I don't know why. Well, I went ahead and played this a second time about a month ago, and I got to the, uh, I only had to play the final boss twice, and the second time, I, the first time I didn't hit a button to, to blow up the ship, and then the, the, the boss got me as I was trying to run down the last corridor, and then I went ahead and played it again, and then the PlayStation didn't freeze up. This time I played it on my PS3 instead of my PS1, or my PS2 I think I played it on. I played on my PS3, and I made it right out the door, and I got to see the cutscene, you know, because I, I went and saw it on YouTube, but I got to see it actually in the game, so I felt better. So, go ahead and check this game out. It's, it's pretty good. They made a couple sequels, but they're not anywhere near as good as the first, in my opinion. I haven't played the third one, but the second one, I just, I didn't like it as much. The second one's not an RPG, so it's, it's more like Resident Evil. This is more of an RPG. Uh, last game I want to talk about is my favorite game of all time, and some of you, when you guys know me, you're going to know what it is, but I had to talk about it. It's uh, Legend of Dragoon. Mm, indeed. Put her in custody. Is this really necessary? It is His Majesty, Emperor Dole's command, to take that girl into custody. Who is she? That is not your concern.
In Legend of Dragoon, you play the character of Dart. He's your main character in the game, and uh, Dart is trying to find the black monster that destroyed his village when he was a kid. He's been gone for a while, and he's on his way back to a secondary city he grew up in called Celis. And they're being attacked. And uh, his friend that he had for since he was a kid, Shauna, who's like a little sister to him, is taken away. So he changes his main uh, focus on the black monster to this. Now this story's got a lot of twists and turns like any good RPG. There's a lot of great character development. The characters are really interesting. And uh, he ends up having to go through, and he ends up finding out this plot with the Wingleys from the past, all the stuff from 11,000 years ago, uh, with the Dragoons and the Wingleys and the Dragons, and things that have to do with his father. And the story is just so amazing in this in this game, and it just keeps you just pulled in. The other cool thing is that it has a, a, time, a, a, a timed uh, turn-based yes. combat system, which is a little bit different. And you can change which uh, timed-based attack you want to do, and there's all different ones, and then they level up, too. Um, you got your, you know, your stores and stuff, regular RPG towns. There's just a lot of really cool stuff in this game that a lot of other games haven't never done before. Now... A lot of people say that, um, I guess this came out this, around the same time as Final Fantasy VII. And a lot of people say it's a Final Fantasy VII clone. And I can, in playing the game, I can see that in there. There are some Final Fantasy VII uh, similarities. Like, uh, they kill Lavitz, which is uh, same as like when they kill um, um, Eris in Final Fantasy VII. And the the hero's kind of he kind of looks like cloud he's got the wild blonde hair and you know it's i get it but i think that the store as far as like you know they say there's only like 12 i heard there was only like 12 original stories in the world and it's then it's all about how well you write those 12 stories i think i personally believe that this is written way better than final fantasy 7 and i know final fantasy 7 is the popular choice out of the two. But I think this game deserves just as much recognition. I believe it, are, it deserves more because I believe that the story, the writing, is so much better than Final Fantasy VII. But that's a, it's a personal thing. And I know a lot of people, and you know what? If you guys are getting mad at me because I'm saying this, you guys gotta remember it's a video game. It's not real life. And I didn't, you know, you didn't invent the game. You may love the game, but you didn't invent it. And I can say whatever I want. It's my show. Ha ha. But anyway, no, the reality is, is that, um, you know, we all have our own opinions on games, and this is the game that, 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 I, that I prefer over Final Fantasy VII, and um, Final Fantasy VII's a great game. It is, it is a really good game, and, you know, and I'm not even looking at, like, the graphical differences, because the PS1, I mean, who cares? The graphics weren't all that great. This did have cutscenes that blew everyone else away. I will say that some of the cutscenes in here are almost as good as like PS3. And if you think I'm lying, go look them up on YouTube if you've never seen them. Seen them. They are like high quality PS2 uh, cutscenes. Blew my mind when I saw them. There's this one scene uh, where they're fighting, it's 11,000 years in the past, and there's this big battle with the dragoons and, and, and everything, and I think the virages, if I remember correctly. And. It's so cool. There's all this stuff going on, and there's explosions, and there's this guy holding this thing up, and his arm like buckles, and the the detail on his face and everything, and the whole detail in the whole scene is so cool. And it's one of those games that you know people uh, should really give a chance if if you've never played it. And they never made any sequels to it. I mean, I'm working on a fan uh, sequel for an RPG maker. It's just something I want to do. I have a lot of free time, uh, as you guys know. And I just, you know, I want to do it just for me. And if, hopefully someone will play it and enjoy it. But this game never got a sequel. It never sold as that as well as, like, Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy is, is, is the name in RPGs. And everybody's played them uh, that's into RPGs. And uh, I think this game, just it deserves, it deserves at least one sequel probably never get it and that's okay maybe some you know there's fan stuff out there i saw a fan uh, uh 
site on um, a fan page on uh, Facebook and these guys were making a sequel and they're actually doing 3D modeling and it looks pretty interesting and I forget the name of it but yeah it's pretty cool stuff but uh, anyway guys uh, that's pretty much it for today um, I'm gonna be doing some more um, more of these kinds of videos where I'm gonna show more of the uh, uh, you know, are the different types of games that I like. You know, maybe you guys will uh, see something that you that you want to try out. But uh, anyway, that's pretty much it for today. And um, just want to say thank you to all of you for subscribing. Uh, don't forget to comment, and like the page, like the video if you like it, and all that good stuff. And subscribe if you if you're new. And I am glad to have you. Um, so anyway, guys, uh, my name's Jason, and it's Video Game Corner, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.